I'm James Bruce, you're watching MUO Tech Guides, and in today's beginner's guide, I'll be going over exactly what this is, the Arduino. This is actually an update to one of the first videos I did on this channel about five years ago, which has since gained over two million views. So we felt it was really about time that we updated it. So this video is split into four parts and you'll find the timestamps in the description to skip ahead if you want. We'll talk about Arduino as a brand and the bigger picture of what Arduino is. Take a look at the Arduino Uno model hardware, the concepts of Arduino shields, third party clones, etc as well as what you might find in an Arduino starter kit and my personal favorite recommended kit. And finally, I'll show you the Arduino IDE or integrated development environment, the software which you program it with, and I'll walk you through a very basic program, a sort of hello world, just to show you how easy it is to get started. So if you've always fancied yourself as a maker, a hardware hacker, a tinkerer, or just an electronics hobbyist that wants to rapidly prototype their project, this video is for you. So what is Arduino? The word Arduino actually covers a broad range of things from the hardware itself, the company and the organization that created the whole project, the software used to program it and the broad range of programming libraries available to download and use. But in one easy sentence, Arduino is an easy to learn, open source, programmable electronics platform. That means you can plug in electronic components, sensors, LEDs, buzzers, motors, and easily write software to read, control, and output to that physical hardware onto this microcontroller. The software is stored on the microcontroller itself, so once you've completed your project, you can unplug the USB cable from your computer and just plug it in somewhere. It will carry on running whatever software it is that you uploaded to it. Now, this sort of programmable board certainly isn't a new concept. The difference is that before Arduino, it really just wasn't that easy. The market was very fragmented. It was a tricky subject to get into. It just wasn't accessible to anyone except electrical engineering students. Arduino, the word, is a protected trademark name, just like Lego. So only the official Arduino company can sell things as Arduino devices. However, the boards and the software are also completely open source. And the components that are on it are off the shelf. So there's no custom chips. And this means that you can legally buy Arduino compatible devices, which either function exactly the same or work with it within the same ecosystem, adding their own features. So there's nothing illegal about Arduino compatible clones that are made and sold by a third party, as long as they're not using the official name and logo without licensing it. But I could copy this, color it purple, and then call it a James Duino and sell that. In fact, you can even make your own Arduino from the various components if you just buy them. But it's really not worth the effort. You won't be saving any money. In that sense, the Arduino hardware itself is nothing unique. There's no magic custom-made chip on here that enables all of this. Instead, it's just a combination of the off-the-shelf hardware, the board design, the shape of it, the software, and the level of support available out there, which makes it such a great, useful uh, system to learn. While an official Arduino board can set you back about $20 to $30, you'll find perfectly good clones from third-party manufacturers for $5 or less, which is just absurd. However, expect to pay around $40 to $50 for a complete starter kit, which will come with various electronic bits and pieces and jumper cables to get you started. That said, this is actually one of my favorite third-party starter kits. We'll talk about it more later, but if I was starting from scratch today, uh, I would have wanted it to be with this. So again, we'll have a look at this in more detail later. The Arduino project is over a decade old at this point, so the ecosystem is vast and you can find pretty much any Arduino that's customized to a particular use case, such as wearable technology for use with conductive thread. This is designed to be attached to your clothes, to put little LEDs on and things. And you can even find very small form factor Arduino compatible devices with built-in Wi-Fi. So this is the Arduino Uno, and it's the first real Arduino form factor that sort of propelled the platform to worldwide fame and got it mass adoption. It's the easiest official form factor to get started with, I think. With a good number of input-output pins, you can plug jumper cables right into, but it's very much a basic no-frills device, suitable for my first electronics project. 
It doesn't have anything like built-in Wi-Fi or a battery. It can't emulate a USB device, for instance. It's just the core product, really. But let's briefly go over exactly what it is that you can see on this board. So there's an Atmega 168 microcontroller chip as the brain of the thing, which is the programmable logic part of the board, and this is where your software is stored and run. There's also a power regulator, a USB communications chip, a timing crystal, a built-in test LED, and then a series of input, output, and power pins. These are split into digital I.O. on this side with analog input pins here and some power pins here. Digital pins can be programmed as either input or output, and they operate at either a high or low electrical value, a zero or a one while the analog input pins can detect 1,024 different levels of voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So some sensors give a digital reading, some, like a simple variable resistor, will output an analog signal. So it's important to match those up to the right pin. Generally, you won't break them by putting it in the wrong one, it just won't work. Now these pins are numbered for ease of use, which you can then refer to in the software. Other Arduino board models will have more or less input or output pins, perhaps faster processors with more memory for larger programs, and some have integrated features like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, or maybe they simply come in a different shape or have different pins. The Uno model board is popular not only because it was the first easy to use uh, sort of standard form factor, but also because you can buy a selection of expansion boards called shields, which then can plug in on top of your board like that. It also means that you can easily go to uh, find a 3D printable case or any other accessories by searching for Uno on Thingiverse. Okay, so background out of the way. You want to get started. Which starter kit should you buy? Personally, I'm a huge fan of the Seed Studio beginner kit. This one is an ingenious all-in-one board and sensor kit called the Grove Beginner Kit, which consists of an Arduino-compatible UNO form factor board and a series of sensors, even an OLED screen, which is actually built into this neat little circuit board here. And it's pre-wired, so you don't have to plug in jumper cables. But what's even better is that when you're ready to move on from those with other sensors, etc., you can snap the entire board out of here and then use either standard electronics components through the usual pins, uh, or you can use the Grove system components, which are self-contained modules that use a single cable connector. In terms of value for money though, this is incredible. Less than $30 for the whole thing with all of the cables that you'll need. Actually, we have a full separate review of the Grove beginner kit, so do check that out, link in the description if you're interested, but definitely recommend this. So the final piece of the Arduino puzzle that we have yet to talk about is the software, otherwise known as the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. Although it's certainly not the only way to program the board, it is the easiest to use and I would recommend it for beginners. You can download the Arduino IDE free of charge for Mac, Windows or Linux, but if you have a third party board, you may also need to download some USB serial drivers separately for instance, it might be the CH430. You should have got some instructions when you purchase the board, but if not, just do a quick Google search for your make of board plus USB serial drivers. Once your Arduino IDE is open, the first thing you need to check is that you have the right board selected up there in the tools menu. Then make sure that the port is correctly connected and showing up. Obviously, it's not the Bluetooth one, and depending on the board type, you may get something else appear here. On Mac, it usually shows as cu.usb modem for me. On Windows, this will more likely say COM4 or COM5. To load your first program, I would suggest going with Blink. So from the file menu, choose Examples, Basics, Blink. Arduino is an extension of the C language. Obviously, I'm not going to do a full how-to code in Arduino tutorial in this video, but for a quick example, you can quickly see some formatting that's needed for C code. So comments either come uh, on a single line after a double slash, or you can place them between slash star and star slash at the end. You can write notes in there and it won't matter to your program. It won't compile and upload to the board. There are two functions you must have in every Arduino program. That's setup and loop, both of which return nothing, so they're classed as void functions. 
Functions are contained within curly braces and every line of code must be ended with a semicolon. So in order to make this easier to read, I've done a version with all the comments stripped out and I'll try and explain what's going on with the actual code here. The setup function runs once when the Arduino is turned on or reset and it's here where you do any initialization of pins or perhaps libraries that you need to use, you would start them from here with their initial parameters. In this case, the pin mode command instructs the board to use a specific pin number as an output. Now remember that digital pins can be either input or output, so you need to tell it which one you're going to use. Also, you could have written pin 13 there for the UNO board, that's where the built-in LED is situated, but you can also use the special LED underscore built-in, which is a variable uh, that it automatically sets in software according to whichever board you're working with. The loop function runs over and over again. It loops while the Arduino is on and running. So this is where the main logic of your program goes. That could be to check on the status of a sensor, to do something if it goes above a certain number, etc. In this case, we're just flashing the built-in LED on and off. Exciting, I know. But to do that, you use the digital write with the built-in LED and high, which means you're sending a high signal or a one or a five volts to the digital pin specified. In this case, the built-in LED or pin 13. Delay means wait. And in this function, you specify the number of microseconds as in thousands of a second to wait. So 1000 microseconds is one second. Then you do the same thing again, but this time you send low, zero or no power to the built-in LED to turn it off. Then you're telling it to wait another thousand microseconds. And that's the whole of the loop. You get to the end here of that function. So the Arduino will then start to loop again through the loop function. That results in the LED flashing on and off uh, with a second in between each state. Now you should go ahead and upload that using the arrow button here in the top left. The tick button, by the way, will just check your code and not actually upload it, while the upload button will check it, compile it, upload it, and then the Arduino will start running it. As a final step, what about if we wanted to make the flashing a little more random? Here's an idea. Instead of passing in a fixed microsecond length each time, let's pass in a random number. Arduino has a random function precisely for this, so let's replace that thousand in each command with random open bracket zero comma 5000 close bracket. A common beginner error by the way is not having enough closing brackets so do check that it corresponds. And there you have it, our first modified hello world for Arduino program that flashes on and off at random intervals. Now that was just a super quick demo to show you how easy it is to get started with Arduino and I hope I've managed to convey firstly what Arduino is, why it's so successful, some might say revolutionary for hardware hackers, hobbyists, tinkerers and makers the world over. In terms of what sort of cool projects you can make with Arduino, that's for another video. You'll also find that I've done a number of projects over at our main makeuseof.com website. I tend to focus on flashy LED things, but right now I'm trying to automate a Lego railway using an infrared LED emitter, a small motor for the switch and a distance sensor to detect when a train arrives. Luckily, someone's already written a Lego train library for me. So all I have to do is send those commands, make use of that and send it out through the infrared. Really though, your only limit is your imagination. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for daily tech news, gadget reviews and the occasional tutorial like this one, as well as checking out the DIY section over at makeuseof.com where we cover a broad range of programming and hardware topics like this one. Until next time, thanks for watching and happy making.